Hey guys, welcome back to the OpenDK platform tutorial series. My name is Sil, and in this part we're going to start working on our level struct and get it ready to be loaded in from a file. Now to start things off, you're going to want to download the tile set from the link in the description. This is just a simple tile set I created in Emscape for the tutorial, and besides the player sprites, it should be everything we will need. So once you got the file downloaded, go ahead and add it to your content folder here, like I showed you before. And once it's added there, don't forget to set the properties. And then once you got that added in, our next order of business is to add source rectangle support to our spritebatch.draw call. So under spritebatch.cs, at the end of the constructors here, we're going to add rectangle f, question mark, source rec, equals null. And then in our loop here, we're going to do if source rec equals equals null. Otherwise, we need to do gl.textcord2. And we'll do source rec.value.left plus vertices i.x times source rec dot value dot width. And then we'll copy that and do about the same thing for the y. There you are, pretty quick and painless. Now that we got that set up, we can start working on our level struct. So once again, let's right click on our project, select add class. I'm going to enable this level. And at the top, we're going to be using OpenTK, using system.drawing, and using system.io. And change this class to a struct. Now we're actually going to create a block struct before we fill in our level struct here. I generally like to put these in the same file since they're so closely related, but you can put that in a separate file if you want. So down below our level struct here, we're going to do struct block. And we're going to make an enum before this called block type. And as the name suggests, this is going to represent our different types of blocks here. So just a few types here. So we'll have a solid, empty, platform, ladder, and ladder platform. All right, so in this block structure here, we're going to have a private block type, as well as a private integer pose x and pose y, and three different bool flags here. We've got to have solid, platform, and ladder. And then we need to make public accesses for all of those. All right, here we are. So we got type x, y is solid, is platform, and is ladder. Now we're gonna make a constructor here. So we're gonna do public block. We need a block type as well as x and y. And this dot pose x equals x. This dot pose y equals y. This dot type equals type. And then we're gonna initialize our flags to false. So we're gonna do And then we need to do a switch statement. So we'll do switch type. And we'll do case block type dot ladder. This one we just need to set ladder to true. We'll copy that and paste it. And we just need to set the corresponding flags in each one here. Just to make it clear, we'll add a default here. And now our block struct should be good to go. So now we can start filling in our level struct. First thing we need here is a private block. We'll make it a 2D array here. I'm going to name it grid. And then we'll need a private string file name, as well as a public point player start pose. And then we're going to override the square bracket operator here. So to do that, we do public block this int x int y. And we do a git. And we will return grid x, y, and then we'll also put a set here, we'll do grid x, y equals value, then I'm also going to make some public access here for a file name, and then two last things here, I'm going to do a public int width, git, and we'll turn grid dot git length on the zero dimension, we'll copy that and do the same thing for height. There we are. Now we need to make the constructor of this struct. So we'll do public level, and we need an int width and int height. And this constructor is just going to construct a blank room for us. So first we need to construct the grid to new block width height. Then we'll set file name to something that we know means it's not loaded in from a file. And player start pose will set to new point one one. And then we need to loop through and initiate each block in our grid. So we're going to do for int x equals 0, x is less than width, x plus plus, int y equals 0, y is less than height, y plus plus, and that'll loop through each block. 
And we want to set each side block on the level to a solid one, and everything in the center will be an empty. So we're going to do if x equals 0, or y equals 0, or x equals equals width minus 1, or y equals equals height minus 1. We'll set grid x, y to new block, and we'll do block type dot solid, and pass it x and y. Otherwise, copy that line, and do empty. And that's about it for our level struct. So now what we need to do for the last part of this video is test that it works and make sure that we can draw it. So we're going to go back over to our game.cs, and in the top here we're going to add another texture 2D, and we're going to name it tile set. And then we're also going to add a level variable, as well as a public static int here. And I'm going to name this grid size, all caps, and this constant can represent the dimensions of each block in our grid space. I'm going to set it to 32 right now. Now what we need to do is on our onload event, we need to do tile set equals content pipe dot load texture. And we're going to load that tile set PNG I had you add earlier. So we're going to do tile set one dot PNG. And then we also need to initiate level. So we'll do the level equals new level. And we'll do a width of like 20 and 20. Now down in our on render function, we're going to go ahead and get rid of these sprite batch dot draw calls. And instead we're going to do four int x equals zero x is less than level dot width x plus plus and 4 and y equals 0, y is less than level dot height, y plus plus. And I also actually want to make a variable up here, I'm going to call it tile size. I'll set it to 128. And this will represent the size of the tile in our tile set PNG, since it doesn't directly correspond with our grid size. And then back in our for loop, we're going to set up a rectangle f here variable. We'll call it source, we'll set it to new rectangle f, we'll do 0, 0, 0, 0. And then we need to do a switch statement, and the variable will be level x, y dot type. And we'll do case block type dot ladder. If it's a ladder, we'll set the source to new rectangle f. And for the x, we'll do 2 times tile size. For the y, we'll be 0 times tile size. For the width and height, it'll be tile size. Let me go ahead and copy this and paste it three times. We need to do it for ladder platform, solid, and platform. And in case you're wondering where I'm getting these variables from, I'm getting them from the tileset.png. As you can see, our solid is in the 1, 0 position. So for solid here, we'll do 1, 0. For platform, we do 0, 1. And for ladder platform, it's 3, 0. There we are. And then we need to do sprite batch.draw. And we'll pass it our tile set. For the position, we'll do new vector 2. Do x times grid size, y times grid size. For the scale, we'll do new vector 2. And we'll do grid size divided by tile size. And make sure we typecast one of those as a float. For color, we'll do color.white. For origin, we'll do vector 2 .0. And for source rec, we'll pass it source. And there we are. Now, if we run it right now, we're not actually going to get what we're expecting. And that's because I have a couple errors of code that I messed up earlier. We need to go back into our swipe batch class. And in that draw call where we called text cord, we need to add parentheses around this and divide the whole thing by texture.width. Same thing for the y value, but by texture.height. That was one error of mine. Now these should be between 0 and 1. Then we also need to, instead of multiplying the full texture.width and texture.height, when we pass in a source rectangle, we need to divide by the source rectangle width and height. So we'll do source rec equals equals null question mark. So basically, if we didn't pass in a source rectangle, we'll divide by the texture width. Otherwise, we need to divide by the source rectangle.width. Then we need to copy that line, do the same thing for the height here. And now we should be good to go. So now if we go ahead and run this, you can see we got a blank level with blocks on each side. Perfect. And that's all we're going to be covering in this part. In the next part, we'll be loading in a level from a file. So I hope to see you there.